The Celtics rebounded from a loss to the Cavaliers by beating the Miami Heat on the second night of a back-to-back -back without all of Chris Stapp's Porzingis, Drew Holiday, Al Horford, and Sam Hauser. Jordan Walsh and Luke Cornett got the start, as Lukembe Mutombo had a career-high six blocks. Jalen Brown's 29 points led the way, while Peyton Pritchard recorded his fourth consecutive 20-plus point game. Jason Tatum and Derek White combined for 37 points, 17 rebounds, and 12 assists. Drew Peterson had his second straight productive outing by chipping in 7-7 seven and seven off the pine. Here's how the Boston Celtics phenoms stayed ready. We'll get to the breakout star in Peyton Pritchard, but in the loss to the Cavaliers, in the absence of Jalen Brown due to an illness and Derek White due to a foot sprain, second-year man out of USC who spent the majority of his first two seasons in the G League with the main Celtics in Drew Peterson, had some big minutes. He played 25 of them off the bench, made two of his five triples, was a team fourth highest plus zero, had eight points, four rebounds, and a steal. Not bad for a player who, prior to Sunday, had played a total of 30 NBA minutes in his pro career. Joe Mazzulla spoke on what Peterson brought to the table after his outing in Cleveland, stating, I thought he had some really good defensive possessions, defending without fouling, he was physical, he's smart, he has a knack for the ball, whether it's offensive rebounding or moving without the basketball to get open, and I think he works really hard. What says a lot about how Peterson produced is that his coach Joe Mazzulla's developed a strategy of not letting players know when they're going to play. You're not big on like telling them or like, you know, saying you're going to play tonight. How did that develop for you and, you know, how do you feel like that kind of puts guys in positions to succeed when they do get called? Uh, I mean, I just feel like if you uh, give a guy um, an idea if he's going to or not going to, it changes his preparation on a daily basis. Uh, and so I just uh, I want our guys to come to the arena every day thinking that their process is important towards winning. And uh, they have to be ready to go, and they got to treat every single day, every single game, as if they're going to impact winning. And so, uh, by not telling them, it allows them to uh, just treat every single day as if it's the most important day. And they do a great job of embracing that. But it's important because uh, there's just a lot of unpredictability over the course of the season. You got to be ready to go at any time. And if you're only ready to go because you know you're going to play, then that doesn't really help your process. Peyton Pritchard's leading all bench players in 20-point games, and as Jalen Brown posted on his story, Pritchard's got 78 threes this season, whereas the man who's known as the best three-point shooter in basketball in Stephen Curry only has 63. Additionally, Peyton has 78 points over his last three games, 29 more than LeBron James over the same span. Pritch, please. With Peyton, we're witnessing the blossoming of not merely the sixth man of the year, but in my opinion, an all-star. From his handle, to his strength, to his poise, to his range, to his shooting in traffic, to his ability to make an impact defensively. Everything about this man has improved, and in turn, it's scary for opponents. He gives the Celtics yet another distinguished savant to account for. As just ahead of Derek White, who's knocked 77 deep range shots down this year. Pritchard only trails Malik Beasley, teammate Jason Tatum, LaMelo Ball, and Anthony Edwards for the most threes made by a player this season. While Drew Peterson stayed ready on a game-to-game -game basis, for Pritchard, he stayed ready over the years. Opposing coach Eric Spolstra touched on that by stating, this is an example of not something that's overnight. Everyone wants instant gratification. This guy's been grinding and working year after year, and each year, he's gotten better. And then, all of a sudden, he's getting to this level where he's in six man of the year conversations. I think the skill set and the work ethic, that's been there, and you just continue to get better, and all of a sudden, people start to notice. Here was Joe Mazzula on Pritchard. You hear other coaches and other teams talk about how he's becoming a priority to stop him. He, he's in all the scouting reports now. What does it say about him that he's able to continually be this productive as teams kind of focus more and more on him? Uh, I mean, it says two things. It says one about him just as a player as he's continued to grow and be patient. Uh, again, the hardest thing for young guys is to make it through their first contract, uh, you know, when there's a lot of unknowns. And you look at his first year, he played a lot, then Kemba came back and he didn't play. And, Seems like every his first couple years, every year there was just wings ahead of him, 
uh, he's just continued to work. And so that, that's hard to do for a young guy. And I think the second piece is that, that, that his teammates understanding uh, that we need to have a different identity. We need to go to different stuff. And he takes a ton of pressure off the other guys. And so I think it's uh, it's twofold. Right? It's, it's uh, what he's done and uh, it's the team empowering him to, to do that because uh, he's special. Jalen Brown had 29 points, seven rebounds, and four assists in this one, and JB was a game high plus 23. JB, however, not only took the time to post about Pritchard on his Instagram story, but post game, he couldn't help but marvel over Peyton's game, as this newest breakout star for the Seas has everyone enamored, and then some. I'm in my bag, man. Um, for sure, I got my shoes on, I'm gonna take my joints back. I, he definitely got the up fakes, the, the post moves, you know, he's definitely been expanding his game, and I love to see it. Like I said earlier in the season, or before the season started, that uh, like we played through Peyton, and uh, against certain teams and matchups, or now it's, I don't think anybody thinks anything of that coming. You know, we're gonna continue to do that, continue to look for him and get going, because, um, He's proven that it don't even matter it's, it's any team now. Um, so uh, when he's got it going, I think it makes it easier and it's better for us as a team. So uh, we, I'm here for it. By the time you're watching this video, you'll likely know the results, but to make the NBA Cup quarterfinals as a wildcard team, given they can't win their group because they lost to the Atlanta Hawks in the opening game of the group stage, the Celtics need the Bucks to beat the Pistons and the Magic to beat the Knicks, all while of course maintaining their plus 23 point differential over both Orlando and New York. Regardless, the win against the Miami Heat, which a lot of people are saying ended the rivalry between the two franchises which has seen them face off in the Eastern Conference Finals multiple times, was big for the Celtics in terms of regaining momentum amidst this 82 game grind which features a roller coaster of ups and downs. That said, you need more ups than downs if you're going to succeed come the playoffs. So clapping the heat by 19 was massive, especially after a loss to the first seeded Cavs, where you, to be fair, were missing two top weapons in brown and white. It likely would have been a different story had those two have been playing, as the Seas only lost by four without them but they seem to handle this loss well, given their performance against Miami. The Celtics now take on the Detroit Pistons at home on Wednesday night. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.